Hi guys, it's Kate with Yoga on a Roll. Uh, this morning we're going to do a yin class. It'll be 60 minutes. Um, you don't necessarily need to have props, but if you would like to have some props with you, you can use blocks, a blanket, and a bolster. Um, in non-yoga language, that would maybe be like two thick, uh, firm like books, um, a blanket from around your house, and then um, maybe just a big pillow, something off the couch or from your bed. And um, I suggest something comfortable to move in. So we're going to start today on our backs. You're going to come to lie all the way onto the spine. If you do have those books and a blanket, go ahead and grab them. Come on down to your back. Hug your knees in towards your chest. And just take some soft rocks from side to side, kind of massaging your spine and noticing where along the back you feel that little massage. Your breath can be totally normal right now. No need to change it. We're going to take our hands onto the knees and start to draw a little circle with the knees. Pulling them into the chest and then kind of holding onto the knees as they pull away from you to finish that circle. You'll feel a little tiny massage on your low back in the sacrum area. That's this triangular shaped bone that's between your tailbone and your low back. Let's go the other way with our circle. Switch it out here. Just take at least um, as many little circles from side to side that you did on the first side. Try to even it out. All right, good job. We're going to bring the feet to the ground and then take that book or maybe you do have a block. If it happens to be a book, I would drape your blanket over it as you do this move. You're going to lift up the hips, take that block and stick it right underneath that triangular shaped bone that we just talked about, the sacrum. And you'll know that you've hit it if the block or the book is kind of um, down towards your, your booty more than up on your spine. So I'm just going to show you. It shouldn't be like super high and not super low onto your booty. It should be right in the middle of both of those areas. So you'll come on down with the hips onto the block. Roll the shoulders together underneath you, almost like you're trying to squeeze something. And then options with your legs. You can leave them just as they are with the feet under the knees. Or you can take the soles of the feet together, let the knees fall out wide, find a little butterfly shape with the legs. Or, if you'd like to go full expression, the legs will straighten like Shavasana legs. And you'll just hang out here with the hips kind of uh, turned up and into the sky. And then start to find some relaxation in your breath. Begin to breathe nice and deep through the nose and out the nose. In the practice of yin, we hold poses for quite some time, so it's a lot different than a flow class. You're here for such a long time that you kind of watch the pose change every few seconds, every minute. And traditionally, we hold these shapes anywhere between three and 10 minutes, depending on what shape it is. So, get comfy. Lean into any tension that you feel. If it's sharp shooting pain, then always come out of what you're doing. But if it's just kind of a dull ache, then that's your body finding space, finding a stretch. Allow those deep breaths to continue. And just continue trying to elongate the breath. So we start with it automatic. And as we move through our practice, we start to control the depth and the rhythm. So maybe reaching it a second longer on the inhale, maybe two seconds longer on the exhale. Noticing where it feels easy and where it feels constricted to breathe. If 
if your mind wanders, that's totally normal. Try not to attach to any thoughts or ideas, but just let them kind of pass in and out of the mind. You'll go through moments where you feel kind of frantic in your mind, and then you'll go through moments where you're like, ooh, was I just about to fall asleep? So take notice of what's there for you. Give yourself some loving breaths for about five more rounds of breath. Good job. Start to walk your feet back underneath your knees. And I'm going to show you two options, well, I guess three options for this next pose. Legs up the wall. So you can literally just take your legs right up that pretend wall um, with the block underneath your sacrum. You can also remove the block by lifting the hips the same way that we came in. Set that off to the side and go legs up the wall with your spine completely on the ground. The last option, if you would like to try it, you're going to come over to a wall, scooch up as close to the wall as you can, and then just allow the legs to literally go up the wall. And it's the same idea with the shoulder blades. You want to squeeze them together underneath you as if you were trying to pinch a little pencil in between them. And this opens up the chest. As you're here, just be mindful of the shoulders. Make sure they don't creep up next to the ears again. Breathe them down and away from your ears. It's a slight signal to our, our mind through the movement of our body that we are safe, that it's all good right here. When you wear your shoulders up high next to your ears, that's a little signal to your mind that danger is around the corner or something is here to be um, unsure of or scared of. So just constantly check in with how much space is in between your earlobes and your shoulders. And start to take notice of the feeling in the legs, whether they're against a wall or they're floating in space. There's like a draining happening all of the lymph fluid and blood flow coming down the legs and back upward towards the heart and the head. And so this could be kind of um, something that you do after a long day of work um, to take the swelling, the pressure out of the legs and the ankles. This is also said to be a de-stressor. That's good for your lumbar spine. So there's a lot of reasons why we would practice legs up the wall. Gives us a nice length in the spine as we lie here supported. So just notice what you feel. Maybe it's something different that I didn't mention. It's unique to you. Notice your belly dropping on the exhale and filling up and puffing up on the inhale. Enjoy the support of your mat coming up to meet you to fill up the space between your spine and the floor. Symbolic of the way our practice supports us, whether it's yin or flow or anything in between. There's many forms of yoga and they meet us exactly where we're at, where we need to be. Good job, guys.
deep breaths in and full breaths out, deepening, expanding our lung capacity. You're here for five more breaths. As you finish the last couple of breaths, just try to make them the biggest, the fullest that you've had. When you exhale, try to exhale every last drop of air out of the lungs, out of the chest. And then slowly, if the legs are against a wall, you're just going to move them closer to the chest and we're going to do some ankle rolls. It doesn't matter which direction you go because we'll switch it out, so don't worry about that. And let's go the opposite way. A little gratitude for your sweet feet, everything they do for you, all the things they've walked you through life, doing, not doing. And then we're going to point and flex. Point and flex. One more time. Point the toes. Flex the toes towards the knee. And then if you're on the wall, just kind of one leg at a time, you're going to spin off the wall only to come back to your mat. So if you were on your mat this whole time, then good for you. Just bring your legs back underneath, or I guess feet back underneath the knees. Staying on our spine right now, we're going to lift the right knee and stick it right over the left. Lift your legs off the ground. Open up your arms. They're either super wide or they're just bent at the elbows, depending on the space you have. The knees will fall to the right side, or the left side, rather, of the room. And this is called twisted root. It's a supine twist, and you've got options. You can leave your left hand on that right knee and pull the knees closer to the ground. Um, you can look up straight ahead of you at the ceiling if you don't want to twist up your neck that much. If you're going for the full twist, your gaze is going over the right shoulder. Maybe you close your eyes and start to drop back inward. Use that left hand on the right knee to just gently encourage the knee down towards the ground. You don't need to have any crazy pulling going on. Just let gravity and your breath do that work. Noticing the shoulders, if they've crawled up towards the ears again, releasing them down. And then a little extra awareness on that right shoulder. It might be popping up from the ground, and that's normal, but see if when you breathe out, you can encourage it down. Good job. Three more breaths right here. Call it back in any time. Kind of frantic. On the inhale, we'll roll the knees back up through center. Bring that left arm to meet the right, or I guess match it. Lift the legs. Let's unwind them. And go left knee over the right. And you're going up and over to the right side of the room this time. 
Noticing any differences, noticing any changes. Let the right hand come to the left knee and let the gaze go past the left shoulder if you'd like that much of a twist or up at the ceiling if you don't. And just kind of see. Does this left shoulder come up off the ground more or less than the right? Can I breathe easier or is it more difficult on this side? Try to relax your neck, your jaw. There's three rules, if you want to call them that, in yin. And the first rule is finding the deepest expression of the posture. So that means going to your edge, getting the most into the pose that you can. And then rule number two is to find stillness. As we arrive in poses, there's this um, kind of desire to shuffle and move about until we find that comfort zone, or in this case, the edge. And so once you find it, there's an encouragement in yin yoga to stay with it and then be still in the whole body. No fidgeting, no moving. And that stillness creeps into the mind with rule number three, where we stay for some time. So by lingering in the postures for those three to ten minutes we talked about, you begin to find that strengthening or that stretch depending on the pose um, a little bit more. Also by staying there, the mind starts to still as the body lies in stillness. And the homework becomes the thoughts. We'll come back to center on an inhale. Unwind those legs. Give yourself that little hug again. We'll bring the forehead up to the knees. Deep breath in. Exhale. You're going to roll all the way to the right or left side. You decide. Land in a little fetal posture here. You can use your arm as your pillow. And just take two sweet, deep breaths. Whichever arm is on top, you're going to use that hand to push you up to a seat. So come to sit on your mat. We're going to come to a cross-legged position. So front view. It looks like this. It's called Sukhasana. And if you did bring a blanket with you, I recommend rolling it up a couple of times and just making it like nice and thick. You'll sit on that. And that's going to release the hamstrings a little bit. Lifting the hips above the knees always helps us find a little ease in a seated posture. So any seat that you would like to take with those cross legs, you can literally cross the ankles. You can bring one ankle in front of the other. If you want to, you can bring soles of the feet together. We are going to take our hands around our knees and find a seated cat cow. So on the inhale, you're pulling on the knees and you're lifting the chest through the shoulders. And on the exhale, you're pulling on the knees but rounding the back and tucking the chin towards the chest. And we're going to roll like that about three more times. Inhale to open the chest and exhale to open the spine. Inhale for your cow and exhale cat. Last time, we'll stay in each pose for two breaths. Inhale, roll the belly forward. Reach the heart forward. Exhale, stay here. Inhale, pull the chest forward a little more. And exhale, we'll round now. Staying here for two breaths. Inhale, feel that stretch in the back of the neck. Exhale, try to pull the back behind you more. One more breath. And exhale, come to a neutral seat. You'll drop that right hand down, maybe on a book or a block next to you, and lift the left arm up and over. Inhale, and exhale to sink deeper. One more time. Maybe roll that arm behind you and kind of twist your gaze to the top of the room. 
exhale to deepen. And we'll come on over to the other side. Breathe in while you move. Switch your block if you used it. Left hand down, right arm up. And exhale it over. Good job. Inhale. Exhale, deepen. Really long length in that arm, maybe rolling it up. Exhale to deepen. We'll come all the way back on an inhale. And for this next posture, this is where um, either the two uh, books or blocks and a blankie come in, or maybe you use that uh, pillow or bolster. Now this pose can also be done um, sans props, so I'll show you all three options here. It's called deer pose. And what you want is you're going to bring your hip up to, I'll show you this way, bring your hip kind of up to mid-mat here. And you want pretty much a 90 degree angle in both legs. It doesn't, you know, super matter if you can't find that exact angle, but you'll work your way there as you grow in your practice. What you do want to avoid is the knee being on the foot. So detach that and just find a little space between foot and knee. You're going to frame your mat with your hands and start to twist your torso so that it might land over that front leg, whichever leg you've decided to start with. You'll walk yourself into a little bit of a fold here. Maybe use your hands as pillows or your arms. If you want, you can go all the way long with the arms and then twist the gaze to one side or the other. If you take the gaze past the shoulder that has the knees next to it, then you're going to be in that full body twist. So just be careful of where you might want to go. Now, if you'd like to add the props, option number two would be the blocks in a straight line, draping your blankie over that whole situation, and then allowing your chest and your head to melt onto what you've created here. Now the last option, of course, if you're using the pillow or the bolster, snug that bolster right up next to your hip, and then of course lay your chest, your head down, and you're in deer pose now. Some people call this pose 90-90. That's because of the shape of the legs. It's a twist, and it's also a little stretch for the outside of that right or left glute, whichever leg you've decided to put in front here. So you're going to hang out here for a few more minutes. Depending on how long you stayed, which option you chose, you've already been here for several breaths. So just lean in, melt down onto that bolster. And if you're kind of holding yourself up with your arms here, just see what you can do about taking the weight out of the arms. You can even bring the arms like back behind you and just lie here. Try to let whatever's underneath you to catch your weight. Let those nice deep breaths move you here. Enjoy the rise and the fall of the breath, of the belly, the heart. Gratitude for the fact that your body can even move in this way. And wherever you are watching this video, a little gratitude that you have access to Wi-Fi, to a cell phone, things like that. This might be a hard time for a lot of us with this quarantine, but at the very least, we're privileged enough to still have some of the amenities that we get to keep right now. Let's take three more deep breaths in your deer pose here. Maybe opening the mouth and <sighs> exhaling out. We're going to bring the hands under the shoulders. Begin to lift yourself up. And depending on if you had the blocks and blanket situation, the bolster, or just you and the mat, you're just going to leave whatever 
is there. Leave it right there. Start to bring yourself into another seat. We'll bring the soles of the feet together. And you're going to take your hands around the inner arches of the feet. So maybe the thumbs come inside the feet. You open those feet up like a book. Take a deep breath in, straighten the spine. And as you exhale, fold forward, round the chin to the chest. And you can use your elbows to push your knees away here. And you'll hold here for about six breaths. So just feel that opening along the spine again. The more you tuck the chin, the more that you're going to feel it in the cervical spine and the back of the neck. Maybe with every exhale, leaning further towards the feet, pushing the elbows more into the thighs, opening the knees. Good job. Come to your edge. Come to your fullest expression. Pull yourself down towards those feet. Last couple breaths. You got it. And then let go of the feet and just let the spine roll up nice and long. Crown of the head reaches the ceiling if it could. We're just going to go to the second side. So you'll just rock whatever hip was not um, up front. If you're using the bolster, again, you squeeze that bolster up towards the hip. Make sure that your knee is not on your foot. Frame the mat with your hands. Start to twist your rib cage so that it could land over that bolster, the blocks, or just the ground. You decide how much you want to twist up. You're either looking over the same shoulder that's next to the knees, or you're looking over the opposite shoulder, therefore twisting the entire spine. And you'll he be here for a few moments. So close your eyes and try to drop inward. Noticing again what's there for you. Sometimes behind the eyelids is just total darkness. But sometimes there's colors, and sometimes there's shapes. And all of this stuff means something. It comes from within. So get curious and notice what you see. Keep your breath nice and strong here. And start to take the weight out of those arms in some way that works for you. You just don't want to be holding yourself up, creating more tension. In yin, we're trying to let go of the tension. So if we were to bring more in, then you're kind of defeating the purpose of the practice. And again, just finding some gratitude. Even if now is just a really hard time for you to be grateful for things, I mean, at the very least, you have a yoga mat. You might even have props or a pillow, something that you can be grateful that you have. And if that's hard for you too, then maybe you're just grateful for your heartbeat today. You're grateful to be alive and well enough to move your body and do yoga.
Make sure you're not clenching, clenching your jaw, biting your teeth. We're going to breathe three more rounds of breath here. The deepest breaths that you've taken yet. Hands will slide under the shoulders. Lift yourself back up. Move yourself back to that seated position. And we're just going to find a quick little seat. Doesn't matter what you like here. Uh, move your props away from the back of your mat. And we're going to actually go long and wide with the legs. So you can sit back on your mat a little bit so that your mat still catches your heels and your it's got a little comfort if you want. And then again, if you do have that blanket, I recommend sitting on it here because a lift in the hips is really going to help this pose. And then just kind of sit on the very edge of the blanket so you tilt the pelvis um, back instead of like down underneath you. All right, we're going in for forehead to knee pose. So if you do have those two blocks or two books, they're going to come in handy here. So you're going to bring your left foot inside of your right inner thigh. And two options. You might have a block underneath that bent knee. You might even have a block or a rolled up blanket underneath the, the right knee. You're going to take a deep breath in and reach your arms overhead. And then exhale and start to twist your body towards that long leg. Okay? When you arrive, another deep inhale in. And as you exhale, Come up and over with those arms towards the right leg. You're trying to melt your forehead toward your knee. So if it doesn't reach, you can always just bend the knee more and then use your exhales to start to journey into a straighter knee. You'll continue holding onto your foot or maybe just your leg. And if you don't necessarily need a block underneath the knee, then here's another option that you can use the block for. You can set it inside of the knee, and that too can catch your forehead, kind of bringing the earth up to you. And you're going to chill right here for several breaths. So you're feeling a nice stretch along the left rib cage, left side body, and a very deep stretch along the underside of that right leg, the Achilles, the calf, the hamstring. So lean into what you feel. You're probably feeling a little opening in the spine as well. Notice where you feel it, and then tap into that. Start to deepen, find that edge. So as you're here, you might notice that you can remove some of the propage because your body is starting to open. So be here in that edge, and then find that stillness. Try to combat the tendency to move and wiggle with using the deep breath. So every time you feel like, ugh, this is getting hard. Take an even deeper breath. Follow that rhythm into your belly. And then open your mouth and oh, sigh out some toxicity, some tension. Keep leaning into what you feel. Minding those shoulders even here. Can you pull them away from the ears? One more deep, big breath in. Exhale everything out. Roll up to a seated position. All right, you're going to take this knee that is bent and start to come to the back edge of your mat with that knee. We'll find a pigeon pose from here. So that same straight leg stays nice and straight and long. Maybe you grab that blanket and you roll it up a little bit and you stick it underneath your booty. That's going to bring the earth up to you so that you can ground down through the hips. So same idea as our deer pose, framing the mat with your fingers, lifting your chest on an inhale 
And as you exhale, folding over that bent knee, the arms can walk out nice and long. Maybe you find that arm pillow again. And you can always add your regular pillow or maybe a block under your forehead. Yoga props don't necessarily need to be actual yoga props. There's plenty of at-home material that you can use. So maybe look for what you have around the house and just kind of come up with some creative ways that you can hold yourself up. The pigeon pose gets a little deeper, well, a lot deeper, let's be serious, into that piriformis, that outer glute area that we were kind of talking about in deer pose. If you have really tight hips, it's quite hard to get the hips to melt down, so your pigeon could often look a little lifted like this, or maybe lifted the other way. It's totally normal. Don't judge yourself. Just try to get into the biggest expression that you can. And then watch if you play another video um, in the next few days or even like next week. Just kind of watch how your practice begins to change, how your body begins to change. You got it. About four more breaths in your pigeon pose, you can do it. Sometimes it's as simple as a mantra of, I am breathing in on the inhale, and I am breathing out on the exhale. I'm just kind of remembering that you're here, that your life is happening in the current breaths that you're taking, not in the past or in the future breaths that you are already done with or haven't taken yet. Right here, the feelings that you experience, the energy that's flowing, that is your life. So stay present with it. When you have an inhale again, the hands walk back under the shoulders. You're going to lift your chest. Take a deep breath in. On your exhale, let's take that blanket away if you were using that or any other prop underneath your booty. Curl the left toes or whatever the back toes are. Curl those under. Take that bent knee and drop it back to meet your back foot. Drop the hips down. Uncurl the toes and just lift through the chest. Deep breath in. Exhale everything out. And we'll move to our second side. So the knee that was bent is going to come out nice and long. And then take that leg that was long and bend the knee. And then you can kind of decide on propage, of course. Blinky under the hips to help to lift the hips and release the hamstrings. Maybe your same exact blocks in all the same places. Deep breath in to rise the arms up. Exhale, spin towards that long leg. Another deep breath in for length. And exhale, forehead toward the knee. So depending on how much action you want in the pose, you can always just drop the hands and let them hang in space. Or maybe you do grab the foot and you try to pull yourself closer to the knee. If you do that, just mind the shoulders. They're probably going to creep up. Do your best to let them come down the back. And then just start watching the changes. You can move your blocks out, maybe on an exhale. And just notice if you can melt closer to your knee with breath and gravity. Letting that right side body open. That left long leg, find a deep stretch. When we stretch, we find space. And when we strengthen, we fill up that space. And the only way to create the space is to try, is to go further. Sometimes it's even just a breath. Continue those nice, long, 
strong breaths, removing any props as you see some space created that you'd like to sink into. If your thoughts ever become judgmental or discouraging against yourself, then really focus on that more than the posture. In these quiet, still moments, um, it's really easy to hear the ego. So just kind of listen to what it is for you, and then try to encourage it instead of, um, you know, stay in any sort of negative feeling. I'm taking three more deep breaths here in the forehead to knee pose. On your inhale, think length. And on your exhale, think depth. Roll yourself up nice and slow. And once you have that nice, long, tall spine, we're going to go to that pigeon pose at the opposite end of the mat. So bring your blankie with you if you're using it. we got a different angle on this side, which will be nice. If you have any tea with you, take a drink. Start to crawl that knee to the top corner of your mat, the same corner that the knee points to. Walk that long leg even longer behind you. And then the blankie comes in handy to scooch underneath the bootay. Frame the mat with your hands. Take a deep breath in. Puff up your chest. And as you exhale, journey into your pigeon. So maybe you use the block underneath your forehead. Maybe you stay lifted on the forearms. Right? Maybe you walk the arms long like we did before. So just find what's going to work for you here. You want to have some flexion or some pointed toes, depending on what you like. It's going to protect the knee the exact same way. So just kind of figure out what it is that you need right here. home yoga is nice because if you need to do anything you can always pause the video and come back to it but you also have that comfort of being in your own home of your safe zone and oftentimes when we come to a group class in like a public setting um, that's one of the deterrents of starting yoga is this idea that you're going to make new sometimes odd shapes with your body and you're going to do it in front of people who might know how to do it better than you. So A, know that you're normal. You're not alone. We all feel that way. And B, like we talked about, space comes from trying something new, going deeper. Change comes from courage. So starting your practice at home is beautiful. Start to get, it starts to give you the courage to come out into the world and show your practice to others. Another thing to be grateful for, the courage that you have just to do these videos. You're here for a couple more deep breaths. Notice any tingling in the leg or any kind of buzzing energy that you can feel moving throughout your body. Make your breaths nice and deep. The 
three more breaths. To exhale, send the hands under the shoulders and start to bring that chest up nice and long again. We're going to go back in for that little back bend that we did. Move your blanket if you had it. Hands plant, back toes curl, lift that front knee back, drop your hips down, lift your heart, deep breath in, and as you exhale, we're going to find a sphinx pose. So you'll stay lifted elbow underneath the shoulder here. Okay, you want to have a block in between your hands just to help you with the distance in between the hands. Maybe frame the block in your thumb and first finger. And then lift the chest, push the hips into the ground, tuck the chin, and you're here for about five to seven breaths. So just kind of notice where you can find the ease. It's quite easy to dump into the shoulders. See if you can lift through the forearms. Lift the heart up and through the collarbones. And keep on breathing. You've got this. You can do this. Helping to strengthen our low back, which then strengthens the core. Our back muscles are part of our core muscles. It's always kind of thought of to be the abs, right? There's a lot more to our core strength than just the front body. Keep lifting the heart. Keep breathing nice and deep. On your last exhale out, we're going to lift the hips back and just crawl into a child's pose. So, of course, options. You can go traditional child's pose, knees together, arms long, or down by your sides. You can go wide leg child's pose, knees wide, two big toes touching, arms long in front of you. And if you really want to, you can use your um, pillow or your bolster. Hug it in between your legs and then drape yourself over it, maybe taking your head to one side or the other. So you decide what's going to work for you in your child's pose here. I'm going to go sans props for the next few minutes. And just a little tidbit that I sometimes share in my public classes. The center between the brows, the third eye center, there's a lot going on there. But right now what I'll tell you about is that you can kind of find a little sinus relief if you rock your third eye back and forth on the ground. This helps a little stuffy nose sometimes. It helps clear out the sinuses, the nasal passage. So, just a little remedy, especially for those of us kind of feeling the snuffles right now. Maybe you can crawl your arms longer on the inhale and use your exhale to push those hips back, sink them lower towards the feet. Notice how your chest kind of melts towards the floor if you're in that wide leg position. And if the knees are together, notice that rounding in the spine. That is the vertebrae opening, you finding space in between each vertebrae. And although this pose is quite um, easeful, it's very easy to check out here, try to check in. Right? Don't go back to your to-do list. Don't go back to your day and the kids waiting for you. Just stay right here on your mat. Right here in this current breath. That's your life. The current moment. Try to stick with it.
two more breaths, whatever you're doing. Try to fill up the belly. When you exhale, see if you can hold your breath at the bottom of the exhale and then notice if there's any more air that you can push out. We'll rise up to sit on the heels. Swing the legs to one side. And we're going to go Supta Baddha Konasana. So that's our reclined cobbler's pose. Um, options, of course, since we love our options. You can have knees um, supported by blocks here. You can even take your blanket and lay it over your hips as you come down. Now, this is an option for anybody that did bring um, a big pillow with them, or maybe um, you've got like more of those blocks lying around, another blanket that you can create, that little pillow that we made before in deer pose. So if you're sticking with this first kind of setup here, you're just going to go all the way down onto your spine. That blanket is just going to add a little weight onto the hips to help the knees open up. The shoulder blades will come together and the arms will be wide. And you're taking up space here, so no mind if the arms come out super wide. Just keep the shoulder blades squeezed together. Put a little tuck in that chin so that the neck is long. And you're golden right here. If you do have those extra props and you're oh so curious what else you could do with them, bring that block set up or your pillow behind you. It comes right up to the booty, and you start lying down over it, therefore opening up your chest, letting the arms come down along the sides of that little situation you have back there. The shoulder blades squeeze, the heart is open. The chin is still tucked for that long neck, and you're in this supported, reclined butterfly pose. So just continue those breaths as we've done this whole practice. Allow yourself to receive something, even if it's just a stretch in the chest. Maybe there's more for you. Maybe you can open yourself up to peace, to love, to gratitude. Even in these kind of difficult times right now with COVID, we still have a lot to be grateful for. So just pick a few things in your mind that you just know without a doubt you really couldn't go through this hard time without. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's the fact that you get to work from home and you get to keep your job. Maybe it's the simple fact that you can go outside and breathe in some fresh air. Whatever it might be, just pick something to focus on. And every time you inhale, imagine that thing. And every time you exhale, just let go of everything else that isn't that thing. Focus on your gratitude. You might even let a little smile sweep across your face. Just notice how that changes your energy. Just a smile. Just lifting the corners of the mouth can sometimes make a world of difference for how we feel. Deep, full breath. Your mat, your props, your life is here to support you. Breathing away any thoughts or feelings that aren't your gratitude. And 
you're doing great. Deep, full breath in, full breath out. And now there's going to be some options here. You can either stay right here for your Shavasana and just kick the legs long, bring them off those blocks, and maybe even roll that blanket out and allow it to cover you a little bit. Right? Maybe you're like, I don't really want this pillow underneath my back as I lie, so just move it out of the way. Get nice and comfortable. Maybe turn off the lights in the room. If you have anything at home that you can kind of drape over your eyes, maybe you have an eye pillow or even just a t-shirt, take something just to find a little bit more depth. And in your Shavasana, since it's really just you in the room maybe, Take up space. Lay your arms out long. Lay your legs out long. Take some full, deep breaths. And drift off. Drift away into a place that carries you, comforts you, supports you. Whatever it is for you. Don't control the rhythm of the breath anymore. Let that go. Unclench your jaw, maybe. Move your tongue around in your mouth a little bit. Just take these full, uh, about three minutes to just lie here in stillness. nice deep breaths as you remain in your Shavasana. If and when you're ready to come out, you'll just find a seat of any choosing. does not matter. There's no right or wrong way to sit. But when you're ready to end, let's find that seat. Rub your hands together. Close your eyes. Keep rubbing the palms. Rub the palms. Rub the palms. And then stillness in the hands. And kind of feel that vibrating energy in between the palms. That energy resides within you. You created it. Notice how it travels throughout your body during the day. Take a deep breath in. Exhale to bow forward. Namaste, yogis. Thank you for practicing another Koranasana video with us.